This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome to our worship service. So nice to see all of you here on this kickoff Sunday. Uh, th there are so many uncertainties that we face in life, uh, uncertainties about what tomorrow might bring. But God's word gives us certainty and stability. He assures us that our sins have been paid for, that, that he has won that victory over the devil, and that he will guide us to our home with him in heaven. Uh, those are the truths that we, we come to celebrate, that we find comfort and joy uh, when we don't really know what tomorrow brings for us. And that'll be the focus for our worship today. Uh, we'll begin with our opening hymn, Speak, O Lord. Uh, our soloist will introduce stanza one, and then I invite you to join in, in uh, the stanzas two and three. May God bless our worship here today.
Glory to God, our light and our life. Come, oh, come, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you sit at the right hand of your heavenly Father and rule over all your creation. Leave us not alone, we pray, but continue to strengthen us with your blessed means of grace and empower us to witness to all people your glory, your mercy, and your gracious forgiveness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Joshua chapter 1. Uh, he, here we see a transition, a, a monumental transition in Israel's history. Joshua was now going to be their new leader, uh, leading a, a group of millions of people, quite, quite an undertaking. Uh, but he had the promises from God, promises from the Lord, uh, that he had no reason to fear this great and awesome responsibility because God promised to be with him, to be with him always. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is God's word. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 63. I invite you to join in singing the refrain for that psalm as our soloist sings the verses. Psalm 63.
sacrifice that Jesus made by laying down his, his innocent life on the cross for us gives us confidence. Uh, it puts things in perspective. It reminds us that, that no matter how hard things might get here and now, we have peace with God. We have forgiveness in that grace. So no matter what problems might arise, no matter what twists or turns our lives might take, we have peace with God. We have the most important thing that we need. A lesson from Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is God's word. Uh, the children may come forward for the, uh, the children's bell choir song.
okay? You guys just put your bells back and then just stay up here. Okay? No, you're not going to sit down. So just stay seated. Stand right in a row, right in front here, okay? Okay? Oh, stay up here, Walter. Okay, go stand over there. Okay, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our holy gospel for this Sunday is taken from John chapter 14, beginning with the first verse. These words of our Savior will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is God's word. Please be seated. And if there's any other children that want to come up for the children's message, you can come on up. Anybody? How are you guys doing today? Good. Let's see. I need I need a volunteer. All right. Okay. I need you to close your eyes. Keep them closed. Are her eyes closed? Are they closed? Okay. Keep them tight. Keep them tight closed. Okay. Go back to your mom. Go back and sit down. Go back and sit down by your mom. Keep your eyes closed. Don't open them. Come on, go back by your mom. What, what's what's the matter? How, how come Mary Beth can't get back to her mom? She can't see anything, right? She can't see anything. But what if, what if I take her by the hand and I walk her back there? Do you think I could get her there? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Thank you. You can open your eyes now. You know... All of us, the Bible tells us, are born blind spiritually. We can't see. We can't see our way to heaven. But do you know what God does to us? He sent us somebody to lead us to our home in heaven, to take us to be with him. And you heard who that is in our gospel reading for today. Who is it that takes us by the hand and leads us to our home in heaven? Jesus does that. That's right. Jesus died on the cross. He paid for all of our sins because he loves us so much and he guides us with his word and he takes us by the hand to our home with him in heaven. How do we know that Jesus knows how to get there? How can we be sure Jesus knows how to get to heaven? That's right, yeah, because he's from heaven. That's where That's his home and he made a home for each and every one of you. A place where you have a place where there's no more tears, no more crying, no more sadness, only joy and peace with Jesus. Let's fold our hands and thank Jesus for leading us to our home in heaven, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and, and, and coming down and, and paying for my sins. Thank you for taking me by the hand and, and leading me to my home with you in heaven. May I always be led by you each and every day. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. You can go back and sit down. Good job, okay? We'll continue with our hymn of the day, Do Not Let Your Hearts Be Troubled. I invite you to join in singing the refrain for that, uh, refrains for that, and uh, our soloists will be singing the different verses. So our hymn of the day, Do Not Let Your Hearts Be Troubled.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, brothers and sisters in Christ, through Jesus Christ, our leader, our savior, our king. Amen. Can we please just pull over? They'd been driving for seven grueling hours. And the, even though the kids had finally fallen asleep and stopped crying, the weather hadn't made that trip any easier. For miles, they had been hitting these patches of black ice. They were getting bombarded and blinded by snow. Can we please just pull over, she said to her husband. We're fine. It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. I know what's going on. I'll take care of it. No, 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 no. The last hour we've seen six cars and two semis in the ditches. You can't see anything. I'm tired. I'm scared. Let's just quit. Be fine. Be fine. We'll keep going. I heard that conversation many, many times growing up as a child in my car. Maybe you've been in a situation like that before, too. You couldn't see what was going on with that rocky road ahead. Maybe it was a little slippery, a little blinding, confusing, left your heart scared. I want to stop. I just want to pull over. I want to find some safety. That's exactly what the, the disciples asked Jesus to do in our gospel for today. They asked him to stop. Asked him to pull over. That road that they were about to go down, it was laced with uncertainty. This dark cloud of danger and doom had descended, and, and they didn't quite see the path and what they did see, it looked kind of scary. You see, when Jesus spoke to them, when he'd been preaching to them, when they'd been talking with them, most of the time, boy, 
gave them some encouragement. It lifted their hearts, lifted their spirits. But lately, what Jesus had been saying was kind of grim, pretty gloomy. In his conversations with them, he had started to talk about things like betrayal, incarceration, even death. Jesus had said to his disciples in John's Gospel, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. One of you is going to betray me. I will be with you only a little longer, and where I am going, you cannot come. The prophet's prediction started to send chills up their spines. It made the hairs on the back of their neck stand up. It was scaring them, terrifying them as he talked about this road they were about to go down. They begged him to stop talking like this. One of them even rebuked him for talking in such a way. It left them terrified. This uncertainty, this darkness, this doom. It isn't difficult for us to understand how the disciples felt because we've all come to different points in our lives where we see that uncertain road ahead. That road that looks like maybe it's got some black ice, maybe some blinding snow, storm up ahead that we're just not so sure. We're, we want to or are able to make it through. Vince loved his job. He he was a a hard worker. He poured his sweat into his work, sacrificed so much, even gave up time away from his wife and kids to help so many other people. But then one day after a, a successful career, some faithful service, he got canned. Now what, Lord? Now where are you leading me? Now what am I supposed to do? Jennifer had the picture-perfect life. She had a loving husband, a a wonderful two-year-old son. Things couldn't couldn't be going any better. But then one day that loving husband of hers walked into the house, said he didn't love her anymore, that he'd been having an affair, and that he was leaving her. Now what, Lord? Now where am I supposed to go? Now what am I supposed to do? This wasn't how my life was supposed to turn out. Kyle and Beth wanted nothing more than to have kids. They they, they loved children, wanted to have a child to raise their own. But even after years of praying and praying and praying and consulting with doctors, it looked like God wasn't going to answer that prayer. Until one day, Beth walks into the bedroom and she says, guess what? I'm pregnant. It was words they never thought they would hear. They, they, They had kind of given up hope on thinking that. After a few months, though, one night Beth woke up in the middle of the night and she had this shooting pain. We've had those days, though, haven't we? I liked my life a whole lot better yesterday than I do today. But before we, before we start asking Jesus, hey, where are you leading me? Why are you taking me down this way? We have to look back and see where we were headed. Because there was a time when we didn't look to Christ to be our leader, our guide, our companion, our friend. There was a time when we only looked inside to ourselves. 
time when we looked only to serve the cravings of our sinful nature, a time when we were headed on a crash course towards that iceberg of hell. And there wasn't a thing that we could do about it. But Jesus saw us lost and wandering through this world of darkness and headed towards a, a damnation of darkness, and he did something about that, didn't he? Jesus took on flesh, came down from his throne in heaven, and he crashed his body, his bones, his blood against the cross so you and I wouldn't have to feel that darkness of hell. He stepped in and he gave himself for you to be your Savior, to be your leader through this life and into the next. The disciples were so scared about what was coming. So scared and uncertain. And Jesus knew they were going to see some horrific things. They were going to experience pain that probably you and I can't even possibly imagine. And they turned to Jesus and they looked for help. And help is what he gave them. He gave them his word. He said, trust in me. Trust in me. I don't want you to be scared when you hear that I've been arrested. I don't want you to be worried when you hear about how I'm being beaten. I don't want you to be afraid when you hear that I've been killed. Because I'm going down this path so you don't have to. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, how can we know how to get there? How can we know the way? How can we know where you're going? And, and, and Jesus says, Thomas, haven't you been listening? Haven't you been hearing anything that I've said? I'm taking you to be at home with my Father in heaven. And Philip, you're so worried. You, you need some sort of a sign. Remember Philip asked, Lord, show us some sort of a sign. Send down the Father and have him speak to us. That'll drive out all the fear, all the uncertainty from our hearts. He says, Philip, you need a sign. Weren't you there when I calmed the seas of Galilee with just some words of my mouth? Weren't you there when, when I broke the five loaves of bread and the two small fish and fed thousands? Weren't you standing right next to me, Philip, when I, I called out to Lazarus after he'd been dead for four days and, and told him to come back to life? Weren't you right next to Peter when he gave that beautiful confession saying, you are the Christ, the Son of God? Philip, you need a sign. You need to hear something that gives you comfort, that gives you hope. You need to see the Father. Well, here I am. I am in him and he is in me. You've heard his words from my lips. You've seen his works through my hands. Our lives are going to take so many different twists and turns. You never know what's going to happen this afternoon or what's going to happen tomorrow that could dramatically change your life. We're going to get pounded with snow. We're going to get hit with sorrow. We're going to feel pain. But, but we have the peace of knowing that our sins are forgiven. We have our Savior who is leading us and guiding us and who tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. As we go through tomorrow or the week after or the year to come, who knows what's going to happen. But one thing we can be certain of, we have a room at our home in heaven with Jesus. And his pierced hands have grabbed us and they're leading us through it. 
May we be ever guided by his word and led home safely to our home with him in heaven. In his name we pray. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in singing the Te Deum. in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers are going to be handing out our friendship registers. To uh, We ask that you please fill those out to mark your visit here with us today. Um, also, those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord.
sisters at Tree of Life, having been baptized and instructed in the teachings of God's Word, uh, for people standing here before you desire to become members of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ promises to confess before his Father in heaven those who faithfully confess him here on earth. You've come before this Christian congregation to declare your faith and to unite with us in Christian love and fellowship. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it, is faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast in the true Christian faith, be diligent in the use of God's Word and sacraments, and lead a godly life even to death? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Will you support with your prayers time, talents, and offerings, the work our Lord has given to this congregation? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Having heard your promises, we, the members of Tree of Life Evangelical Lutheran Church, receive you in fellowship and love and invite you to share in our worship and mission. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, in mercy you joined these brothers and sisters in Christ to your church when they were born again of water and the Spirit. In mercy you taught them your saving truth. Grant that they may offer themselves as living sacrifices to you as their spiritual act of worship. Transform them by the renewing of their minds so that they will not conform to the pattern of this world. Help us live in love and harmony with one another and work together in serving you. Keep us united in your spirit and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I also invite the uh, Sunday school teachers to come forward for their installation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you've been called as teachers in the Sunday school of this congregation. You are doing the work the Lord has committed to his church by feeding God's little lambs. Your work is both a great privilege and a serious responsibility. To equip yourselves for this blessed work, it is necessary that you faithfully study God's word, devote yourselves to prayer for those entrusted to your care, and prepare for the lessons that you will teach. It is also of great importance in the teaching of the Savior's little ones that you set an example by leading Christian lives. I ask you now in the presence of God in this congregation, are you willing to accept this responsibility and to do your work faithfully according to the ability God has given to you? If so, answer yes, and I ask God to help me. I now install you as teachers and officers in the Sunday school of our church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God grant you his Holy Spirit and give you wisdom and strength to carry out your duties to his glory and for the good of his children. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please stand. Members of Tree of Life, I urge you to regard these teachers as servants of Jesus Christ, teachers of the gospel and God's gift to his church. Support them in their work, pray for them, and bring your children to Sunday school so that you and your families may receive the eternal blessings the Lord promises to those who hear and learn his word. Let us pray. Gracious Savior, you bless every effort to bring children up in the Christian faith. We ask you to give wisdom, kindness, and perseverance to teachers who feed your lambs. Teach them your truth 
so that they may teach others. Cause the children entrusted to their care to be eager to learn about their Savior. May your goodness go out into all the earth so that the people in this community and everywhere may hear it and believe it. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. May God bless your ministry. We have a, a prayer request uh, for this morning for the family and friends of uh, Trooper DeMuth, who was killed yesterday. We, we take our, our, our prayers, our hearts to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, we thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity to uh, celebrate your word and your sacrament, celebrate the grace in which we now stand. May your word uh, continue to give us strength and hope uh, as we face the uncertain days of darkness. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you be with the family and friends of Trooper DeMuth. We thank you, Lord, for his faithful service in, in serving our community. Uh, we ask that, that your holy gospel would bring comfort uh, and aid to his family and friends, that the news of the resurrection from the dead would bring them hope and cheer. Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You, you defeated it, and, and your, oh, your empty tomb is the proof for our faith. May that empty tomb always be uh, the, the, the symbol of our hope and, and the, the everlasting sign of your love. May it always bring us comfort uh, when we face those dark and difficult days that are, are filled with something even as, as harsh as death. We ask all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us such a wonderful gift with his body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Uh, however, we, we ask that if you have not communed with us before but would be interested in communing with us in the future, you speak with me uh, later on after the service. We continue with the preface found on page 14. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen.